Uh, well, uh, you mean from my novels? Yes. Uh, well, everything is both conscious and unconscious, and from my novels, I don't think I can give a direct uh, example, but what I can say is, uh, this opposite is also about uh, the mundane, the ordinary life, and another life, uh, which is like, uh, which calls us towards literature, philosophy, something different from this ordinary, uh, horizontal um, aspect of life. So uh, this tension is uh, also within all my novels. This is something I can say. So yeah, I, I, you know, I would like you to be more concrete still. Still, you have you want to write a book. Huh? Imagine you are going to write a book, or maybe you are writing a book now. The experience of writing a book. This is what happens this is... somewhere in your mind which says, "Well, this is the source of what I'm going to write." Oh, you're asking me about my resources of creativity. Yes, uh, as a writer. I think, I think it's, it's mainly about having a problem. If you have a problem with something, then you want to write. And uh, this is always uh, the motivation. Because if you're content with everything, then there wouldn't be a reason to write. So um, I think it's this content, to have some sort of a problem. But, being uh, unhappy. Yeah, it's about this horizontal, because being discontent with the ordinary life, which the, uh, the daily life, because why do we not want to live the daily life, but go out of it with philosophy or literature or with all these other resources? I think this is always the main thing. And it's also within my novels, but not directly, quite indirectly, I can say. Yeah. Or probably as a writer, you, you cannot theorize on your own writing. I can, but oh, no. you need to be more specific. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You want to be more specific for me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if we are speaking about the source of creativity, this is. My English is so poor. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. because, because you're a mistake to ask me to be here because. Uh, okay, so. He's not maybe, using the maybe, maybe, maybe. You can take. Maybe it's better without me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's not better. <laughs> it's yours. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, for, for for the book um, we are speaking about, but which is so put aside. I haven't right? seen it since it was published. Have a look. <laughs> we find in there a very beautiful short story uh -huh. uh, written by you. Um, how? Uh, can I get it? Well, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have it. Uh, it's about a mother. Uh, well, you being know, it's in not bed. autobiography. It's it's a joke. So. Let me just finish where it is. The people haven't read it yet. So it's about a mother in bed, maybe dying. She is having one little thing which makes her happy in her bed, which is a small mirror, and she has a son. A son, well, who happens to be a writer, but. That is a coincidence. Well, what was the source of this of this um, short story? Well, it was my, and it still is the biggest problem because, you know, because I I don't believe in short stories. You know, after the giants like Ivan Bunin or Isaac Babel or Anton Pavlovich Chekhov or these Russian giants, you know, I was growing up with them or. Like uh, Isaac Bashev, a singer, born in Poland. Uh, after all <coughs> these writers, well, to write a short story, it's, it's nonsense. So I did it just for money. You know, and <laughs> my mother is my mother is okay, and, yes, and, and, and uh, I was just thinking what to do. For it. And, uh, no, I am kidding. My mother is really sick. <laughs> my father is really sick. And I'm not kidding. It's very sad. You know? And my brother is also very sick. So after the war, and you're, yourself, I'm going you're to not school with very my well. children <laughs> to help to all these people. So I have no time to write a novel. I think to write a novel, it's something. You know, To write a book, to think about two years, you know, hard, hard, hard labor, to think about suicide, to be depressed, to live with the book, it's something. But to write short story, and now it's nonsense, you know. 
But, but so I was trying to do my best for you because <laughs> I know you a long time and I am very happy that you published because I know that you are a very strong critic. Strong. I'm not you have no mercy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. You'll see what I will be Sorry, writing Sorry, I'm talking about. too much. <laughs> this is a very nice story, Joachim, but it's not the answer to my question. The question was, where did it spring from, this story? What was the first image, idea, except for the money? Well, I was in Israel, and... Uh, Ask me why. Because my book was published there, of course. <laughs> and I was buying souvenirs. And for my mother, I really bought some uh, honey. 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 And uh, it was very strong for me because, you know, she was, during the time of Second War, she was child. I don't know, she was 10. And when, when she saw Hebrew, she was like, ah, it really existed. You know, it was, and she was talking about her uh, life after the war. Like everything, it was uh, it, it was Jewish or something was strange, so it was interesting for me. And it was the beginning. Could you have made a novel out of it as well? A uh, novel? Mm -hmm. If I. Uh, if you had had some time left and not all this. Yes, of course. If I, you know, I spent I don't know six or seven months here in Vasena, and I was writing like crazy. I was alone, I had my bicycle, no trams, you know, no mother, no father, no wife, no children, no uncles, you know. I am from so-called Central or East Europe, strong family life. I was alone and I wrote, uh, I don't know, two or three books. One of them was published, you know. And the other ones? Uh, I need some more time for it. <laughs> we, earlier we spoke about the heaven or the hell in which writers are when they are writing. How is that for you? Do you need the city? Do you need the people around you? Or are you happier when you are outside in the woods of Vasna like Yachim was? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, you, you can do that. Okay. Um, I prefer to be isolated uh, when I am writing, so it's these uh, series of um, regression and progression uh, following one another for me. So uh, during the times that we are reading and write, uh, writing, usually we regress uh, from the daily life. So um, as I told you, it's because I have problems with the daily life that I am writing. So it's both sort of a... it's it's. Old hell and heaven, actually, it's one and the same time. You stick to, to your opposites here, again. Yes, again. <laughs> uh, what kind of a, a literary city is Istanbul? Um, there are many events going on, like book fairs, festivals, um, uh, conferences, and all these things going on, but it's like how it is uh, in any other part of the world. Uh, or on the floor, you, you see the commercial uh, literature. So the real literature is still hidden. You need to seek and find it. So in that aspect, it's like uh, how it is, like any other part. Uh, but it exists. It exists, literature. yeah, it yeah. exists. Mm. And um, how is the situation if we speak about the bookshops and the publishing houses? And it's still the same. The commercial ones are, uh, they are uh, all on the showing case. I hear a uh, criticism in your answer. What does that mean, that the real literature is in the woods? Uh, well... No, I don't mean in the woods, I, I don't mean the city. What I'm saying is, uh, as always, uh, on the visible grounds, we see, uh, <coughs> we do not see the real art, as always. And I think uh, the previous, uh, the, the best authors that we have from the previous uh, period have still not been translated. Mostly, uh, they are not really recognized uh, in Europe, I can say. 
the best authors are still only being read and published in Turkey. They have died already, but uh, I'm talking about the previous generation. Sorry. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> With what? That the best authors have died. Yeah. Who are they? Are, they are standing on the shoulders of all the all the dead people. That's true, but we are in the middle of a crisis still. I mean... <coughs> Maybe in the future, you know, to have direct mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Joachim in Prague, what, what, what did you observe over the last years? What happens? In, is there a new uh, literature? Is there a yeah, new think, kind of well, protest? Is there an well, engagement yeah. somewhere? I think the Prague is among the cities with a strong tradition of literary life. Like, uh, I don't know if you know the name of Jaroslav Hasek, or of course you know Franz Kafka. So sometimes it's like, uh, it's like a burden. It's on your shoulders, all these dead, dead people. Well, I think the government uh, is uh, barbaric, you know. For example, the book taxes, you know. And uh, <coughs> if... Uh, <coughs> If I'm a little bit nostalgic, I think about the era of Václav Havel, you know, years and years ago. It was great. Now it's a little bit, little bit like, uh, well, people who want to write have problems to survive. But I think it's okay. 10 or 15 years ago, maybe we were talking about, I got sort of depression that this is the end of literature. We are the last generation, you know. Uh, internet and so on. But now I think uh, the book is like uh, uh, like pillow or knife or, or, or death. It's a product. Yeah, and it will survive. So I came and, and I'm very positive. You know, and, thanks and to green color of this. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think of, uh, of the new generation of writers, younger than you? Is there of course, could they're be, very could bad. Be better, could be better. <laughs> could be better. <laughs> <laughs> but is there a new generation at all? There are, there are some names, but I, I don't think uh, there is some group or people who, who are thinking we are generation. Mm -hmm. Did you I don't think know, that? Maybe it's because of the technology, you know, because the generations before mm -hmm. were, I don't know, communist or anti-communist or nationalist or something, but now these young people are, they are very international. Some of them maybe are trying to write in English. What do you think of that? Know. Does it work? Huh? Does it work? Can a writer uh, write in a language which is not his no, mother tongue? There, there are names like Samuel Beckett or Joseph Conrad, but among the new writers in Prague, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future. You, you stem, if I'm not mistaken, from a very famous literary family yourself. Uh -huh. You had a father who was a famous theatre man, I think, and your grandfather wrote. Is, is, it, that, is it in that way that you see tradition uh, as a burden for yourself? Maybe, but, uh, well, because, because I'm from a communist state, I remember my father as a worker because he was among his forbidden writer. The same with grandpa, he was a so-called Catholic writer. So when I was a boy, his books were not forbidden, but nobody knows about it. So they were writers, they were not writers, it's like me. <laughs> Two hours ago, I was thinking, maybe, maybe I'm good, but now I don't know. And in the morning, it will be terrible in the morning, so I don't know if I'm writer. <laughs> Ask me to write one more short story and I, I will see you. I'm sure you are, so don't, don't you worry. But do you, do you feel the same burden uh, Joachim is speaking about as well? Or do you think a writer can enter in the world and make his own creation, since you're a specialist on the, on the energy, the creative energy? Or do you feel that you are part of a whole universe, and you have to relate to all your predecessors. 
Well, actually, it's again bold, <laughs> I, I, I have to say. Well, uh, we are writing because uh, we want to uh, create a unique uh, world, but it's not really detached from this world, even if it is unique. Uh, so, uh, being creative is like being bold, uh, a part of the world, but at the same time, uh, to be unique, I mean, to be able to have both of these characteristics at, at one time is the ideal. So I think creativity really serves this um, ideal quite well. So uh, a book is both a part of the world, of the shared reality, but still it has its own reality, which is also uh, maybe more real than uh, the reality. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say that both yes and no. Then I'm going to ask it in a different way. <laughs> why why uh, are you writing? Why do you really want to be a writer in this world? Are you dying if you're not writing? Why? Uh, I think we all write because... Uh, I'm not... not uh, no! Please say I. Why am I writing? I would like to have your answer. Why are you writing in this world? Not somewhere else, but in this world? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, I said that I want to create uh, because this is not real, actually. Uh, what seems as if it's real does not seem like real to me. So it's not like I'm creating another reality. It's not like I'm creating a world, but it's like I want to show what is real, that, that this is not real, that uh, we are only sharing coffee uh, at the table. It's not that we are really sharing something or what they are showing us to be real is not real. So this is why I want to show what real is among the many motivational uh, ways I have. This is. I think this is the main one. You want to open the masks we are all wearing? To uh, tear them off? It's, it's not only masks I'm talking about, it's about um, uh, the objects uh, of reality which are, which we have been taught the wrong way. So writing is like, uh, it's like a rebellion against uh, showing the um, how can I say, um, um, uh, well, it's, this is why I'm saying that it's non-conformist. So it's a, it's a way of being non-conformist and we all write because uh, we feel that we actualize our, our own existence. Through